My name is Carly Deacon from the Manitoba Wildlife Federation. Chronic wasting disease is the most serious risk to Manitoba's wild deer populations. Since the first case was detected in 2021, Manitoba continues to take action to contain the disease and protect the province's populations. Hunters are required to submit biological samples of mule deer, white-tailed deer, and elk harvested in mandatory surveillance zones. Monitoring the disease is critical to controlling the spread. We have put this together for hunters who would like to collect their own samples from their harvested deer for chronic wasting disease testing. Manitoba veterinarian and avid hunter Eric Ansu is going to walk you through how to extract the retropharyngeal lymph nodes and the lower jaw from a deer for chronic wasting disease sampling. Hi there, I'm Eric Ansu. I'm a veterinarian and avid hunter and I'm here to talk to you today about collecting your own samples for CWD testing. So the first thing we uh, should talk about is what supplies you need for collecting the samples. First off, a pair of disposable gloves, a Ziploc bag to put the samples in, a permanent marker to label the bag, a sharp knife, uh, such as a hunting knife, and something to grab the tissues with, so a leatherman, pliers or forceps, and then some bleach to disinfect the instruments afterwards. Prior to collecting your samples, you want to make sure you label the bag with your tag number, the sex of the animal, and also if it was a white-tailed deer or a mule deer that was sampled. It's also a good idea to write what's in the bag, in this case, lymph nodes. It's also a good idea to have a hard shell container, for example, a coffee cup, to put the samples in to protect them when you're submitting them. Uh, if you're going to be mounting your animal, you want to make sure you cape it out prior to collecting the samples. Okay, so uh, we've got the deer on the back of the pickup truck here and you will find it um, a lot easier to do the sampling if you're on an elevated surface such as on the tailgate of the truck or on a table. Especially if this was an antlered animal, it, the antlers kind of get in the way. So if you have the deer pulled to the end of the tailgate, the head and neck extended and maybe even tipped down a little bit, this will help you find your landmarks. So there's two important landmarks that we're going to need in order to find where to do our cut. One is the back of the jaw, and you can feel right here. And the second, right here, is the larynx or the Adam's apple. These are your two points. And in between them is a soft spot, and that's where we're gonna be making our cut. So you're gonna cut across the neck of the deer with a pretty sharp knife. Here's the, the larynx again. It's sometimes handy to pull on that as you cut down. You're gonna cut down the back of the jaw towards the ears, making a slight step back all the way to the spine. This is a fairly deep cut and you'll need to cut through all the connective tissue and muscle till you get to the point where the skull meets the neck. Okay, so I've got some landmarks here to show you. All right, so uh, here we have the, the neck area opened up and I'll just give you a little bit of a tour. This here is the larynx, so the opening of the windpipe. This hole here, this is the esophagus and the lymph nodes are located at the, the 10 and two o'clock position above this dark muscle right here. And actually in this sample here, the lymph nodes are popping right out at you. So these are them. Some animals you do have to dig a little bit underneath this tissue beside the esophagus, but in this case, they're right there and you just wanna grasp them with your forceps or your pliers or your leatherman. Again, be careful if you're using your fingers and you just wanna cut away all the surrounding tissue. Okay, that one over there. And it, same thing on the other side. Now I'm just gonna leave that one there for a second. I wanted you to see the difference between lymph node and salivary gland. So salivary gland is here. Sometimes it's right above where you're gonna be sampling. It's just sort of come off with this half of the cut, but it has the appearance of chewed up bubble gum. You can see it's kind of knobby and it's often a lighter color than the lymph node. The lymph nodes are bean shaped and distinct, and maintain their, their structure. There we go, there's another lymph node right beside the salivary gland. This animal here is a little bit older, but in a fresh sample, these are quite distinct looking. So we'll just set that one over there. Okay, so again, the salivary gland is kind of like this chewed up bubblegum appearance, knobby, and the lymph node is bean shaped and distinct. So salivary gland is sometimes submitted in error, but it's not useful for CWD testing. We want the retropharyngeal lymph nodes right there. 
Uh, so now we're going to be removing the jawbone and the jawbone is important in aging the animal so it's useful in in studying the demographics of chronic wasting disease. So with your animal still on its back but with the nose pointed up you're going to make a cut down from the corners of the mouth right down to that jawbone and it, this is going to take a fair amount of cutting and force to do. So cutting straight back right to the jawbone. You may find it useful to remove the gum. Be very careful operating in here. And you're going to cut all the cheek muscle up towards the ear and the eye. Your blade along that muscle. So the jawbone goes along and then up quite a ways. So you got to cut away all that on both sides. Okay, so once you've got it loosened up a little bit, it'll take a fair amount of pressure, but you're going to pull that jaw down and then cut away any of this muscle or connective tissue from the jaw. So this is the top of the jaw, the other side broken off because this was a hit by car deer. Cutting off all that and I've got a metal glove on here so be very careful. Peel away all that tissue. Cut the tongue out from the underside. So the jawbone goes in the poly bag at the depot with your lymph nodes. And the lymph nodes we mentioned earlier, if you put them in something like a coffee cup to protect them. Okay, so uh, we have the jaw and the lymph nodes there. You want to put your lymph nodes into your pre-labeled Ziploc baggie. And then again, you want to put your sample into something that's going to protect it, so a coffee cup. And then you're going to submit your jaw and your coffee cup. Take that down to your local depot. And there you go. That wasn't too bad, eh? Hope everybody has a great hunting season. Thanks for watching. Reminder to all hunters that the Manitoba government has distributed new hunting game tags for use in the fall 2024 hunting season. The new, green, game tag now includes an optional biological sample section to help further enhance chronic wasting disease CWD, monitoring in Manitoba. Simply fill out sample license number and species on the front of the tag, and the kill location and date of kill on the back. Coordinates can be easily found through a mapping app on your phone or online. Then submit your sample to any drop-off depot in Manitoba. While the optional biological sample section does not replace the requirement to fill out a wildlife sample receipt form when you drop off your samples, it does provide a convenient option for hunters to record this information at the time of harvest. Hunter participation to help manage CWD has been extraordinary and is critical to managing this disease. For more information on CWD in Manitoba, visit www.manitoba.ca/cwd.